this episode, I'm going to show you how I set up my development environment on a Mac computer. The first thing I'll do is install a text editor, and a great and free one is called Atom, made by GitHub. You can download it from atom.io. And the second package we'll download is called iTerm2, and this is just a replacement terminal for the one that ships with Mac OS. And next we'll install Homebrew, which is a package manager for Mac OS, and this will come really handy installing third-party applications on our development environment. So to install this, we'll copy the installation script. And then from our launch pad, we can launch the iTerm. You can right click and paste the installation script, and then hit return. This will go through a series of installation steps, and just hit return if it prompts you. It'll ask you to pass in your password for your user account, and this is because it needs some administrative access to change some folder directories. And in previous versions of Homebrew as well as OSX, you would have to install your command line tools separately. However, Homebrew now does this for you. So you don't have to download and install Xcode or any of the Xcode tools because it'll happen automatically. And by default, Terminal will use Bash. However, I prefer OmaZSH, which is just a different command line interpreter. I like ZSH because it has some features that you don't really get out of the box with Bash. For example, with ZSH, once you install it and you're using a Git repository for your Rails application, it'll automatically tell you what branch you're working on. So once you type out the curl command, it'll prompt you to enter in your password just so it can install the ZSH. And once it installs, we'll go ahead and close our terminal and then start up a new one. Even though macOS comes with a version of Ruby, it is a system version and it's not usually updated. So we are going to install our own Ruby version manager, and my preference is RVM. However, there are others out there that you can choose from. So to get started with installing RVM, we will first need to install GPG. And once GPG is installed, we can then install the key. And from here, we can install RVM. It is a curl command to download the script from getrvm.io, and then it will execute it. It'll then ask you to run the script, which this is simply just saying, hey, I want to start using RVM now, so let's go ahead and load it. However, if you just copy and paste this from the show notes, this dollar sign who am I, it'll automatically fill in your username. That way you don't have to search for it and copy it from your terminal. We can then type RVM dash dash version to make sure that it's installed. And then I'll create a new file in the home directory, and this will just be called .gemrc. And I'm going to insert in the gem no document into this file. And I do this because on my development environment, I really don't care to install the documentation that comes along with every gem. If I do need to find some documentation on the gem, then I'll usually use Dash or another program or just visit the gem site to figure out what to do with that gem. Once we have that done, we can type RVM install and then our Ruby version that we want to install. If you don't know what version is latest available, you can type RVM list known. And this will show you a list of all the latest versions of Ruby that you are able to install. And you'll see that some are not from the MRI but you have other options like JRuby as well. However, for our purposes, we're just going to install the latest stable 2.3.1. And once Ruby is finished downloading, you can type ruby-version and you'll see that it's now running the latest version. And you can also type RVM list to see what the current version of Ruby that you're using, as well as the default version. If you had another version of Ruby, you could type RVM use, and then type in the version that you want to use for a particular project. And the first thing I'll do on a fresh Ruby install is I'll update the Ruby gems version. And a gem is simply a library or package that's bundled and available for you to download to extend your application's functionality. And once that's completed, we'll install the gem called Bundler. And Bundler is a gem that's typically used for creating new gems or for managing gem versions within one of your applications. And finally, we can install Rails with gem install Rails. And this will go through and download a whole bunch of different gems that will be used for your Rails application. We're now ready to create and run our first Rails application. We can start by typing Rails new and then just the name of our Rails application. In this case, we'll call it test app. 
And once it is finished, you can change your directory. If we look at our available directories, you'll now see we have a test app. And we can type cd test app to change into our Rails application. And then type Rails S or server, same thing. And this will start our Rails application. And you'll see that the application is now available at our local host in port 3000. Using our browser, we can now go to localhost colon 3000, and this should load up our Rails application, and it works. And from within our Rails application, we can type atom space period, and this will launch our atom editor to our current folder. We'll close some of these introductory tabs, and then on the left hand side, you'll see the folder navigation of our Rails application. And if we wanted to publish our application to GitHub, then we can type git init to initialize our code repository. You'll see that we're using git and we're on the master branch. The yellow X means that we have changes that have not yet been committed. However, before we can commit our changes, let's go ahead and set up a few different git settings. The first we'll want to set the global color UI. So we'll type git config dash dash global then set color.ui to true. You'll then need to set your user's name, and that's using a similar string, but instead of color.ui, we're going to use user.name, and then pass in quotes, your name. We'll then also need to set our email address, and that's just going to be git config global user.email, and then pass in your email address. And in order to publish to a git repository, we'll need to create a SSH key, that we can then upload to GitHub, our private key. I won't get into too much of that today. However, what you are able to do is type ssh-keygen-lowercase-t rsa-c and then pass in your email. And this will create a public key and a private key in your .ssh directory of your home folder. So it's created my key and then I can type cat then go to my home folder .ssh, and then type in id rsa pub. And this will display the public key. And I can copy this key, paste it into GitHub's key management, and then I would be able to push this app up to GitHub. If you're just getting started with learning Rails, and I recommend two books to read. One is called Ruby on Rails Tutorial by Mark Hartle, and it's a great online book if you want to read and really start diving into the code. And another great book is called Learn Ruby on Rails 5 by Daniel Kehoe. And it's a really great book if you want to really learn some of the in-depth features of your development environment, as well as picking up Ruby on Rails 5. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.